Good evening. Good evening. Okay, good evening, everyone. We're going to start the class. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hello. Okay, where are we going to have this in this class? Let me check. I don't know what happened here. Okay. This is the main goal that we have for today's class. Um, we are going to be talking about networking experiences and also we are going to emphasize a little bit about the past tense and the yes, no equations, right? <clears throat> These are the two topics that we are going to study, both topics at the same time, right? Both are in that book and that is what we are going to start in this moment so we have here the definition for networking what is networking i would like to bueno creo que todos van a estar de oyentes okay gilberto jessica mateo rosa right not todos <laughs> many <laughs> but not everyone um alfredo alcantara Present, You've got trouble with your microphone, I think, right? Le Jose Adilson? Present. Jose Adilson, can you help me reading, please, what you have there? 
Okay. The definition for networking. Okay. On time. All right. On time. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> okay. The process. The process of making connection and building rela rela relationship. This connection can provide you with advice and contacts which can help you make informed career decision. Networking can even help you find um that jobs internship networking can take place in a group or one on one setting. Okay, thank you very much. Now I'm going to read it and then uh, it is going to, you can check some words that maybe have been difficult for you to pronounce, right? Okay, networking is the process I'm going to okay. take, let me do this. Networking is the process of making connections and building relationships. These connections can provide you with advice and contacts, which can help you make informed career decisions. Networking can even help you find an advertised jobs, internships, networking can take place in a group or one-on-one -on -one setting, right? So what, what is this in a general way? Networking, as you know, we have now around four years working online, right? Since 1919, since 2020, we have started using the networks more and more because we have been connecting one to each other um, through different gadgets, maybe through your phone, maybe through computers, or maybe through um, tablets, right? Because we haven't been um, working on site. <clears throat> we have been working from the houses. So that's why we have created, in a way, the network. We are working, right? But online. That is mainly what we have here, right? That is all, all these processes that we have been through for four years, almost four years. And this topic is included now there in the, in the book. This is what we have. For example, I'm going to show you the book, the page where we are. Here, okay. <clears throat> this is what I'm telling you that in the book we have uh, included this the networking. Are you good, <clears throat> sorry, are you good at networking in business events? Do you often share business cards when you network? Well, we are going to answer those uh, equations, but also we are going to include more structures 
in which we are going to um, include the past tense in our conversations. Now you can see this conversation. You can see it and you see some like interesting aspects, some very interesting aspects such as what do you think these aspects are telling us what are they telling us uh Prayer and fast. I'm sorry, sorry. Yes, verb in past. And when you see this, what do you think about? Modal auxiliary. Ah, okay, that is a modal auxiliary. Yes. And what kind of modal auxiliary? Past. 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 Okay, past. You have seen here verbs in past. And also yeah. you can see this modal auxiliary that is immediately connected to the past tense. Right? Whenever you see the auxiliary T, you need to understand that we are talking in past. Of course, we have different structures with the simple past, and it includes yes, no questions. But also, we can have these other structures. That is, that is the affirmative statement. Let us See this is what we have from the book. This is what we have from the book. Equations in past. This one, this one, this one, this one. All of them are equations. And then I have this, this is the grammar structure, and then we are going to come back and we are going to talk about the exercises that we have in the book. We have simple past tense with did. You have two different aspects, two different structures there. On my left, I have the positive statements. In my right, I have negative statements. Positive statements or affirmative statements are the same. But it is not that they are going to start saying, no, I, I don't work, no. They are called positive or as affirmative statements because they are telling you a truth. They are telling you a fact. On the other hand, the negative statements, they are telling you a truth, but in a negative way. That is what we have in here. Let's study the grammar structure. I say, I worked in Mushroom's company in May. He lived in that small house two years 
ago. We studied in the last year. Maria knew how to cook. Yesterday I had a party. My mom had my wallet last night. All, all the sentences are in past. How do we know? How can we know that that sentence is in past? The verb. The verb, of course. The yes. verb, what is the characteristic for the verb in past? I, ed, or ed, ed, ed. ed. However, change. That is verb. not the only one. Uh -huh. Change the, the verb. The verb change. And you have memorized a list of verbs. You have said, okay, no, new. You have learned them a lot. In the way, you have learned that the verbs can be classified can be classified in two types. Which types? Regular, regular. irregular. Regular? And irregular. And irregular. Yes. Two types of verbs, regulars and irregular, which is a characteristic for the regular verbs. Se le agrega ed. Ed, 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 ed to all verbs. Whenever you see a verb ending in ed, well, that is a regular verb. Yeah. And it doesn't happen the same with the irregular. Some of them change completely. Some of them change a bit. And some of them do not change at all. For example, Cut. What is the past tense of cut? The same. It is exactly the same. And is that irregular? Yes, because it doesn't change. And what about this? Read. What is the past tense for read? What is the past tense for read? Read. Excuse me. Read. Read. Do you agree? Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes. Okay. No, it is not read. Road. No. Thank you. 
It is red. Red. Pero se, se escribe exactamente igual. It doesn't happen the same with, for example, with cut. You have cut in present, cut in past. Cut in past participle. But what about with this one? In present, read. In past, read. Past participle, read. Pero se escribe igual. The only difference is the pronunciation. That is the only difference. So we need to know that in this uh, group of verbs, all of them are there because they are irregular, right? There are some others that they change only one letter. For example, For example, this is past, new, and what is what? What is the present? No. 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 What changed? Only one letter. Present, no. Past, new. Ooh. Only one letter. But there are some others that they change completely. For example, The verb in present is by, and in past, boat. You see, la única letra que mantuvo was letter B, boat, by boat. They change. Y todos ellos entran in the irregular verbs. Some of them change one letter. Some of them don't change anything. Some of, of them change completely. That is a part of the irregular verbs. And now that we have understood that we have regular and irregular verbs, now it is going to be uh, a little bit like easier for you trying to identify. Now let's compare the positive statements versus negative statements. Can you see the difference? Yes, compare. What happened to the verb? Simple. The verb didn't change. Excuse Simple. me? That, the verb is the same like present, but okay. we had a auxiliary. Ah, okay. That's it. In the negative statements, we can see the auxiliary in negative form. And then I say, didn't, didn't, didn't. And then we have the verb. And the verb, it is not with ed anymore. Why? Because the auxiliary is conjugating the verb. In the positive statement, the verb conjugates itself, and that is why we have ed or in a different way. That's why I say I worked. 
But in the negative statements, the verb is not conjugated by itself. It is conjugated by the auxiliary. That is why our verbs here are in the based form. They are not in present, they are in the based form because the auxiliary is conjugating them. And now you might be asking to yourself, ¿Y por qué dice eso que el verbo, el, el auxiliar, did, did, está conjugando el verbo? Because that is what it does. For example, if I ask you in Spanish something, if I ask you, conjúgueme una oración negativa um, o positiva, if you want, uh, con el verbo estudiar en presente. ¿En Spanish? En Spanish. Uh... Yo no estudié para el examen. Ok, in past. Yo no estudié. In present. Yo no estudio. In future. Yo no voy a estudiar. Ok. <risa> ¿Por qué está cambiando usted la manera de conjugar? ¿Qué le estoy diciendo? Presente, pasado, futuro. Right? Y como usted ya sabe cómo hacerlo en Spanish, usted está cambiando. Ah, yo estudio. Ah, pero si yo digo futuro, ah, yo voy a estudiar o yo estudiaré. In past, ah, yo estudié. Porque no puedo decir una oración en pasado diciendo yo estudio. No. ¿Por qué? ¿Cómo lo ha aprendido? A saber, pero ya se lo aprendió. <laughs> ah, it is because it is in Spanish. In Spanish, we don't need to emphasize that much. Pero gramaticalmente no lo hemos estudiado. Lo hacemos porque es parte de nuestro native language. Now, what happened in English? For example, in the negative statements, ¿qué sucedería si yo le digo que me lo leyera? Primero voy a borrar esto. What happened if I asked you Okay. ¿Qué dice ahí? ¿Qué dice Yo trabajo... aquí? Uh -huh. Yo trabajo en la compañía La Coca-Cola. Yo trabajar. Ah. Uh -huh. Y Ajá. si solo le dejo la palabra not. Yo no trabajar. Yo no trabajar. <risa> Yo. No vivo. No. Vivir. Yo no vivir. vivir. Ah. Yo no estudiar. So it happens the same, for example, cuando vienen los americanos o cualquier, perdón, los estadounidenses o cualquier persona que habla inglés, they want to speak Spanish and they, they speak in this way. Some of them, they say, yo no trabajar. Because in Spanish, it is more difficult to identify 
¿Cómo voy a conjugar? Spanish is more difficult, believe me. But in English is easier. Porque ellos simplemente saben que lo van a conjugar en pasado con un solo auxiliar que le pongan a todo. ¿Cuál es ese auxiliar? Did. Did con el not y ya está en pasado. Ya está conjugado. The auxiliary is the one that conjugates. Now you can say that uh, la primera dice yo no trabajé. Digo trabajé because the auxiliary is did. Give me a second. Okay. So we have now here the two things, positive statements and negative statements. ¿Y por qué en el positive statement no tengo el de auxiliary? Verb está en... El verbo cambia. ¿Quién está conjugando al verbo? En afirmary... Nadie, el verbo change, work. El verbo en sí se conjuga. Ok. Él, ok. Mm -hmm. Itself, él lo hace por él mismo. Entonces él dice, I worked. Mm -hmm. But in the negative, who does it? The auxiliary. The... But in the positive, the verb does it. Yes. Ok. Cute. Now let us see, but these are statements. What happened with equations? I have equation here now. This is equation. Remember that we have two different kinds of equations. We always have uh, yes no equations and WH equations. What kind of questions are these? Yes, no questions. Yes, no questions. The auxiliary is telling you immediately that this is in past. Who is conjugating the verb? Did. The auxiliary. And the verb is in the place form. Now, you see, see the structure. The yes no equations, they start with the auxiliary did. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if you are going to use I, you, we, they, he, she, it. It doesn't matter. With all of them, you are going to use the auxiliary did. And then we have, did you enjoy the match? Yes, I did. Muchos pueden dejar la respuesta hasta acá. And it is correct. I can say, yes, I did. Short answer. Pero también puedo agregarle more information. Y yo puedo decir, yes, I did. I got so exhausted, but I liked it. This is extra information. No me lo preguntaron, but I am giving the information. Did you do something else that day? No, I didn't. Hasta aquí la puedo dejar. No, I didn't. Contesto lo que me preguntaron. Well, I just called my girlfriend and went out with her. I'm giving more information. Pero eso de quién va a depender? Of you. If you want to give more information, ¿quién la va a dar? Usted va a dar more, more information if you want. But if you don't want, you just simply say, yes, I did. No, 
I didn't. Ya voy a dejar de hablar yo, ya van a ir ustedes a trabajar. Just the next slide. I'm going to finish with the WH equations. The WH equations, the only difference is that in here we need to include the WH part. We are going to use what, where, how, another one. Another one? Why, when, who, all of them. And then after the WH, we have the auxiliary. The WH, the auxiliary. Y después seguimos con la misma estructura de la yes no equation. But now that the answer is different. Because the, anf the answer is una información que nadie sabe. So you need to say, hey, what did you do last Sunday? Nadie sabe qué hizo usted, pero le están preguntando. Por eso también se llama information question, right? Because you need information. And then you say, well, I played soccer with my friends. Esa es la información que ellos quieren. So that is what you're going to say. Where did you work last year? I worked at a restaurant. How long? Okay, aquí estamos con tiempo. How long did you stay there? Mm, we stayed there for about two hours. Right? Now, in the book, now that I have already explained this, in the book, we have in the conversation. What kind of question is the first one? Yes, no question. Yes or no question. It, it is a yes, no question. Yes. Did you enjoy the seminar? Yes, yes I, I did. did. ¿Le dio más I información learned. o no? Yes, yes. I, I learned a lot. Of. I learned a lot. A lot. Tell me more. I updated my networking skills. I learned to move from small to smart talks. Great. So, otra pregunta. Did you make new con contacts? Yes, I did. Brindó más información? Yes. I exchange business cards with 10 people. Awesome. So two questions, yes, no questions in simple past y todos los verbos están en pasado. Now we are going to pronounce. Ahora viene la parte more complicated. But first, we are going to work with some exercise. Previously, the second part, it is going to be related to pronunciation. Listen. Did you enjoy the seminar? I say, did you, did you, did you, right? Sometimes we say, did you, did you, did you enjoy the seminar? I don't say, did you? When I'm explaining, of course, I'm saying, did you? Did you? But when we're speaking, and then we change, and we have to do it a little bit faster. 
So it is. Did you enjoy the seminar? Yes, I did. I learned a lot. Tell me more. I updated my networking skills and I learned to move from small to smart talk. Great. So did you make new contacts? Yes, I did. I exchanged business cards with 10 people. ¿Escucharon ustedes que en algún momento yo dije Learned, updated, learned, exchanged? ¿Escucharon que dije eso? No. Yes or no? Eso no lo vamos a decir así. Lo vamos a cambiar, pero después de hacer unos ejercicios con las yes, no questions. ¿Okay? Vamos a ver. Here we have the equations. Choose the answers to the equations and compare with a partner. Did you go to a seminar? About the conversation that you, uh, that we have read? Did Luis go to a seminar this June? It is not this June. Did Luis go to a seminar? Yes, he did or no, he didn't. Yes. Okay. What are we going to do? Is. Van a ir a hacer una conversación. Ustedes. Using the past tense. It has to be related to your job. The context has to be related to your job. Maybe tuvieron una reunión. Maybe you had to do a task. Algo. No, no, you had to do. You did a task. In past. Y van a incluir preguntas y oraciones, tanto positivas o negativas. Right? That is what we are going to do in this moment. Let us go and work. Vamos a ver, we are 22. Solo espero que no queden todos los oyentes... Prefiero que queden todos los siguientes en un solo equipo. Ok. Ok. So that's where we are going to work. Teacher. Yes. Buenas noches. Disculpa que va a estar doliente, pero ya me escuchando muy mal de salud. Ok. Así que, ok. Por eso es que no voy a poder ni participar. Bye bye. Buenas noches. Ok.
need to go to the the trainee, creo que es capacitación. Trainee. Mm -hmm. Trainee. Perdón, me está fallando el micrófono. Dios guarde. Ok, ¿qué me puedes decir de tu trabajo? Did you enjoy work? Came eh, my work um, every day. Check the email in the morning. Voy, okay. voy a empezar a hacer yo aquí la conversación y me van, me van, me van ayudando ustedes. Eh, a ver si está bien. O sea, did you... Voy a empezar. Did you work in your... The work. Después sería... <coughs> did you enjoy the work? Y me va... Did you enjoy work? Y tú me debes de contestar, o quien sea. Yes, I did. Ajá. I like work. Yes, I did. I like. Que eso dijo la teacher que era como agregarle algo a la conversación, ¿verdad? Sí. Después podríamos decir, bueno, empezaríamos. ¿Te gusta tu trabajo? Si te gusta, ¿qué es lo que haces, verdad? Okay, yes. Chicos. Mande. 
ojo, ojo, cómo la están planificando. Porque la están planificando en base a presente. Si usted dice, ¿te gusta tu trabajo? Eso es, ¿do you like your job? Yes, I do. ¿Do you enjoy your job? Lo están haciendo en presente. Pero... Para pasar, por ejemplo, did, ¿did you enjoy work? No. El hecho que no solamente necesitamos escribir el auxiliar, y ya estamos en pasado. No. Yes. No. No. Tiene que haber un evento pasado. Por ejemplo, en la conversación, ¿de qué evento están hablando? ¿No están hablando del trabajo en general? Como disfrutaste de, de, de la fiesta, por decirle así. De la fiesta, del seminario, del almuerzo, de la reunión. Hubo algo que ya pasó, pero el trabajo no ha pasado. ¿El trabajo lo mantienen o no? Sí, tiene razón. Yes, pero por, en este caso lo planteamos, por, por ejemplo, lo que hice o el trabajo que hice el día Entonces, de ayer. O... No, pero, hay, pero sí ya le entendía un poco más a la teacher. Hay que cambiarla. Ok. Uh -huh, vaya, okay. aquí ya lo voy diciendo entonces. Gracias, Ticho. Entonces sería como ella dice, por, de un evento, no precisamente de, de, del trabajo, digamos, presente. Entonces okay. hay que pasarla uh -huh. en una fiesta. Sería, did you enjoy the party? party? Ok. Yes, vaya. I Fine, and you may actually. Abu, uh -huh. uh -huh. do you arrive at work on, on time? Yeah, I did. Y puedes about... como argumentar un poquito más. Ajá, dale, dale. Yes, I did. What about you? Yes, I did. Pero es lo que te digo, podemos argumentar un poquito más. Vaya, por ejemplo, si sí, llegamos temprano. Eh, aunque hubo mucho tráfico, no sé cómo decirlo en inglés. Ah, bueno. Como ah, me preguntaste okay. primero, yo tendría que decir eso. Ajá. Eh, Como eh... argumentar un poquito más la respuesta, o sea, que no solo sea yes, I did, sino que yes, I did, but no yes. sé, hubo mucho tráfico en inglés. Yes, I, yes, but yes, I did. But there was a lot of traffic. Ah, vaya. Mm -hmm. Entonces ya ahí puede seguir la, la en vez de otra right. pregunta, puede ser como really. Um, no sé. Really. Is... <laughs> Es triste esta situación. <risa> Ajá. No, pues sí, porque todos vivimos lo mismo. Queremos llegar temprano. Claro. Es triste la situación. Puede ser really the same. Igual yo. O un un same. ¿Cómo decir igual yo? O say. ¿Cómo? So did I. Ah, ok. So Ajá, entonces. Did I. Ajá. Porque, o sea, la respuesta también de la otra persona podría ser esa, como dijo Leticia. Es mejor okay. decir, so did I, que decir, me too, para avanzar, ah. para subir el nivel, ¿ok? Ah, ok, ok. okay. Voy a anotar.
Ready? We're coming back. Okay. So we are going to listen to different rooms. Solo tuvimos tres rooms activas de las cinco. Así que vamos a escuchar a los participantes uh, from the room number one. ¿Quiénes eran los del room number one? Uh, mi teacher, um, okay. Elsa. Ok, good. Uh, Yeah. Espero que hayan copiado porque al, cuando la teacher nos sacó se borró lo que había anotado en él. El... Oh my God. <risa> la... Oh my God. <risa> Pero yeah. iban, creo, que, creo que iban anotando. Pero por eso Tenía... les aviso siempre, les avisé justo y después sí. de unos, después de es un que... minuto se cierra. Sí, Yo lo que... tengo. Ok, ahí está. Great. <risa> Eh, que habíamos iniciado, teacher, preguntándole a Valeria sobre, el, la pregunta era, did you have a training yesterday? Ajá, uh -huh. sí. Now, ahora, ¿Sí, si me ayuda, ¿por qué? Ajá. Me. Y, eh. Contesta yo, tú. Valeria. Sí. Ajá. Uh -huh. Yes, I did. I learned a lot. Tell me, what did you learn? I learned how to avoid money laundering. And how long did it last the training? The training lasts one hour. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Okay, congratulations. Good. Room number three. Room number three. Adilson, Roberto. Okay. Lo siento, me estoy fallando el micrófono. Okay. Eh, nosotros, teacher, teacher está, yeah. íbamos con José Dilson, Gilberto y René, pero eh, por cuestiones de tiempo entablamos solo la conversación a Dilson y yo. Ok. Yes. Bye. Ok. Hi, Kenia. Did you enjoy the party? Hi, Adilson. Yes, I did. Tell me, tell me more. At first, we drank wind, then we danced, 
all night and I let off sweet. Amazing. So, did you like the music? If I like in the disco mobile, right, and we dance it until our tire fit her with my co workers. Excellent, Kenya. See you. Ok, ustedes ya adelantaron la fiesta navideña. <risa> no es la de independencia. No me... <risa> ok, good. Well, at least um, you are like, you're going to enjoy the party. Good. Y el último equipo from room number four. Hubo alguien en el en el cuarto. Está Gilberto, Kenia y Osvaldo. Okay. Ah, en Rosy tú. Sí. Hello. Solo que How are you? por cuestión de tiempo hicimos una pequeñísima conversación. Ay señor. Okay. Let us listen. Y que pasamos mucho tiempo así en silencio porque como yo soy de oyente yo le decía a él que no podía hablar mucho. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, but you did it. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. And you? Excellent. Thanks for asking. Ya terminó. No. Eh, okay. Hay una pregunta. Eh. Se nos fue Rosy. Ok, después vamos a continuar entonces Osvaldo. Ok. Ok. Okay, guys. So now, <clears throat> with the conversations, I heard that you, you use different uh, verbs. With these verbs, you use uh, some regular and some others were regular verbs. That's why in this moment, We are going to write down here verbs. Can you write down here only regular verbs, please? Only Regular verbs. Solo el verbo necesito. I don't need the sentence. Only the verb. But regular past verbs.
No todos están participando. Somos 18. Y solo tengo 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 participantes. Ok. ¿Qué característica dijimos que tienen los regular verbs? What is the characteristic for the regular verbs? Regular. Uh -huh. Regular. We only need to add D. Or ED? Mm -hmm. That is the only thing. Yeah. That's why they are regular. Okay. We Aha. have to memorize. Change. Yes. Change the... Yes. You need to start learning some verbs. Aha. Entonces, esta palabra... Brust y arose son verbos regulares. No. no. ¿Por qué no? Because are irregulars. Because they don't end in ed. Así como todos los demás, right? For example, you have written here learned. Lasted, worked, learned, cooked, cleaned, brushed, play, walked, closed, exchanged. What else? Solamente esos. So it means these two, si no terminan en ED, no son regular. Así de sencillo. Así de sencillo. Ahora. Yes. What, what is the meaning of rust? Excuse me? What is the meaning of the verb brust? Should be answer? No, but that is brush. Este, I think that it is not correct. This, yes, a rose, but brust, or I don't know who did it. Mm. Okay, because uh, what I think it was this, brushed. This is what I think that he or she wanted to write, brushed. Right? B U R S T. Aha, I think okay. that this, this person wanted to say brushed. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. That's what I think. Okay. Bueno, aquí escribieron yes, alguien más. Opened, acted, thanked, danced, and walked. Okay. So I have some similar verbs with this. Now I'm going to show you. My verbs. So we have regular and irregular verbs. And here I have only regular verbs. Why? Why are they regular? Well, I have here the simple present. And from simple present, I have the past simple. Walks, walked. Help, helped. Visits, visited. Play, played. Play, played. And all of them are in ED ending. 
ed, ed, ed. So in these exercises, I have only regular verbs. Los regular verbs son los más fácil porque solo aplicamos las reglas para convertirlos en pasado. Solo necesito aplicar regla para convertirlos en pasado. ¿Cuáles reglas van a ser? Después vamos a ver. Pero el resultado <coughs> final será id, 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 id. Eso es lo más fácil. That is the easiest part. Now, please, can you read the first example in past? Can you read? I can. Okay, let us try. I think I can. Tom's walk walked to school yesterday. Okay, continue. We help more every day. We help more every day. Okay. We help more a day before yesterday. Okay, number three. She visited her grandmother last Sunday. Thank you. And the last one? They play a soccer yesterday, yesterday afternoon. Ok. ¿Cómo se pronuncia este verbo? Walked. Walked. And this one? Walked. Next, visit. 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 Thank you. Okay, good. Ahora me lo van a demostrar. Okay. First, the first thing that you are going to do in this moment is poner en pasado todos estos verbos. Todos son regular. All of them are regular verbs. Screen, screenshot to this picture, please. Screenshot to the picture. Screenshot with a picture. ¿Y qué van a hacer? Primero, to write down the past tense. En segundo, pronunciarlos. Only. With your team. Yes. Solo eso van a hacer. Only that. Do you understand? Yes, teacher. Yes, ok. Voy a seguir cambiando personas aquí porque... Voy a... Bueno. De todos los oyentes, solo Rosa está, digamos, prácticamente activa, pero al final se nos quedó inactiva. Aquí estoy, teacher. Lo que pasa es que se me va el inter también. Ok. Ok, bueno, vamos a ver. Past tense and pronunciation of those verbs. Los que tienen en pantalla. Ok.
¿Cómo? La otra sería... Cook. Cook. Ajá. Count. Solo ID, creo yo. Pese que esa no estoy muy segura, pero... Bueno, dejémosla así. Y si no, pues ya ella nos va a corregir. ¿verdad? Cry sería la misma. Que no pueden quedar... Las dos letras. Dos vocales sí. juntos, perdón. La otra tiene. Uy, se me apagó. Dance. Farm classes, Commodore cooked, counted, fried, dance, dropped, finished, helped, Friday. Answered, arrested, brushed, carried, climbed, classes, Commodore cooked, counted, fried, dance, dropped, finished, helped, Friday. Ponerle un punto después de cada verbo para que me dé una pausa. Ok. A ver si nos da chance. <laughs> Pero si activo una fila cada uno, decirla. Así ha pronunciado. Yo la primera fila, así como la habías organizado. Ah, bien. bueno. Bueno, y vemos cómo es. Tomamos la captura a, la, a lo que vamos poniendo en el chat y eso le vamos diciendo a la, a la teacher, entonces. De acuerdo, de acuerdo. Sí, porque bien, después bien. La saca, se borra. Chivo, chivo. Ahí le puse punto, a ver si se escucha. Answered, arrested, brushed, carried, climbed, placed, Commodore, cooked, counted, cried, danced, dropped, finished, helped, frightened. El Commodore, como el, el auto. Mm -hmm. Arrested, era el otro, el segundo. Era. Primitive, arrested, ajá. Arrested,
coming back. Okay, I have been checking the way that you have been pronouncing y encontré varias técnicas. Y ahora me van a decir, cada equipo, cuál fue su, su técnica para saber cómo pronunciarlos. ¿Ok? Let us listen to the first team. ¿Cómo saben cómo pronunciarlos? Fisher es en, en mi grupo, pues, compañero nos compartió la... La nota de voz de cómo se, cómo se pronuncia cada verbo. Pero, ¿cómo lo hizo? ¿A dónde lo pusieron? Lo, se compartió en el grupo. Pero, ¿cuál es la estrategia para en, saber? En el traductor. Ah, ok. El traductor para poder ir escuchando cómo se pronuncia, ok. También hay un enlace donde dice how to pronounce y pone la palabra que quiere pronunciar en inglés y ahí le aparece. Ah, ok. Thank you. ¿Alguna otra técnica que aplicaron? Todos estaban aplicando diferentes Ahora, ¿cómo se pronuncian? I want to see the result. ¿Ok? Give me a second. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, how do we pronounce these verbs in past? Simple. No era este, ¿verdad? Era la otra lámina. Ya los había asustado, right? Esta es, okay? How do we pronounce these verbs. Vamos a ir con la primera columna. No, primera fila. I'm going to write them in past. Todos en pasado. Ok. Now all of them are in past. How do we pronounce them? Number one. Number one? Answer. 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 
Answer. Answer. Answer. Answer. Answer. Answer. All of them are in present. All of them are in present. Answer. Answer. Aquí tenemos, tenemos una silent letter, la W, no se pronuncia, right? Answer. Answer. Can you repeat? Answer. Okay. Number two. Arrested. 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 Number three. Brush. 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 Number four. Curry. 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 Number five. Claim. 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 Okay. Solo el número dos está en pasado. Todo lo demás está en presente. Pero, Why? I know, I know, it is diff different when we want to produce something that we have in our mind. Pero para entenderlos mejor, explíquenme la regla que aplicaron para ver si está bien aplicada. Si usted me dice, esta regla es la que ocupé, entonces solo hace falta afinar la pronunciación. Algunas como conté al final. Algunas como conté. ¿Cuáles? Por ejemplo, brushed o dropped. Dropped. No, pero aquí no finished. tenemos dropped. Aquí no tenemos esas. Aquí, en este listado. Cut. Ah, ok, ok. Pero qué Bruce. regla, no, pero quiero que me expliquen las reglas. Ustedes saben que tenemos reglas para escribir the verb in past, right? Yes. yes. Ok. Yes. Ah, pues también tenemos regla para la pronunciación. Which one did you apply? I don't know. Estamos adivinando. Estamos adivinando la pronunciación. No estamos dando la respuesta certera de esto se pronuncia así por esto. Es como que me dijera. ¿Cuál es? ¿Cómo escribimos the past tense of drop? Which is the past tense? Can you spell it? D-R-O-P-E-D. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay. Is, it okay. is this okay? Is this okay? No. Yes. No. Missing a P. Missing a P. It is double P. Yes, double P. ¿Por qué? It's a rule. Tell me the rule. <laughs> <laughs> ha chicos. Ha chicos. Okay. You need to apply the rules. You need to know how to explain them. Two different rules. The first rules is how to spell the, the verbs. And the second rules are for pronunciation. I'm going back. Eh? 
and we are going to check the spelling rules. In the spelling rules we have here, these are the rules. Y cada vez que les pregunten cuál regla es, explíquela. If you explain, if you understand, you have no problem. For example, the general rule is all the verbs have to end in ed. All of them. But then we have certain characteristics. For example, vienen los primeros. The verbs that end, oops, que delgadito. The verbs that end in Y, I'm going to add ED. And the result is this. Pero no todas las que terminen en Y. Because I have another one that ends in Y. But the result is different. What is the rule? Because we have a consonant. Aha. Uh -huh. Because we have a consonant before letter Y. Ahí usted está aplicando regla, right? And then you say, uh, well, this is different because there is a consonant before letter Y. When we have a consonant, we change letter Y, we add I, E, D. And this is the result, tried. But it doesn't happen when Y is preceded by a vowel. When Y is preceded by, a, by the vowel, I add only E, D. Then I have another rule. All the verbs that end in E. All the verbs ending in E, we are going to add ED and this is the result. Well, indeed, we don't add ED. We add only D. And the result is this. Y ahora viene a la que le duplicamos la consonante. Se la duplicamos solo porque queremos or because there is a reason according to what the rule says. ¿Qué dice la regla? When the verb has only one syllable, only one, one syllable, And ends in consonant, vowel, and consonant. If it ends in vowel, cons consonant, vowel, and consonant, I'm going to double the last consonant, plus ed. ¿Cuál era el verbo que trabajamos, Elsa, en la lámina? Que había que duplicarte. Drop. Ok. The verb is drop. Consonant, vowel, and consonant. ¿Cumple con la regla? Yes. One yeah. syllable, yes. So, we double. P. Double P, ED. Dropped skipped that is the reason for me to double right and this visit goes with the general rule we add ed to all verbs Cualquiera que sea la letra, okay? To all of the rest of the verbs, we add ed. 
but the, this is for spelling. But for pronunciation, for pronunciation, Vaya, explíquenme las tres reglas de este. Pronunciation of the regular past verbs. ¿Quién se sabe las reglas? A Wilson? Maybe, maybe coach. Okay, for try. Example, try. For example, verbs. Um, no, rem no remember si en book, en book, ah, las que son vo voiceless. Pero que es voiceless. La, son los verbs que no vibra la garganta de uno. Por ejemplo, Ok, no se recuerda muy bien, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Yes. Ok. A esto se refiere a Dilson. Voiced and voiceless. Aparte de a Dilson, ¿quién sabe qué es voiced and voiceless? Nobody. Okay, we are going to do it fast because we, are, we have only 20 minutes. Put your fingers in your throat here. Y vamos a pronunciar sonidos de las letras, no las letras. No voy a decir, ¿qué letra es esta? Usted me va a decir, en, from the alphabet. T, O, N, no. You are going to produce the sound. For example, which is the sound for this letter? Do you feel vibration? Do you feel vibration? Manténgalo, mantenga el sonido. No lo corte. Do you feel vibration? Yes. 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 Entonces, ese se clasifica como voiced. Right? And then I'm going to say, produce the sound of this. El sonido de la letra C, ¿cuál es? Tiene dos sonidos. En este caso, aquí, como está escrita, ¿cómo suena? Póngase los dedos. No vibration. No vibration, right? Pasa aire, right? So, cualquier sonido donde usted no sienta vibración aquí es voiceless. 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 Y los que sí suenen son voiced. Voice. Yeah. Why is this important? Esta es la base para las reglas de pronunciación. 
Si usted no sabe hacer eso, difícilmente va a comprender. The reason for you to pronounce the past tense of the verbs in the correct way. Si esta es la base for pronouncing this. Las reglas dicen así. We are going to produce ED when the last sound is t or D. Cada vez que el último sonido del verbo, último sonido, sonido, no última letra, último sonido of the verb is or D, I'm going to add an extra syllable and I'm going to pronounce it it. For example, visit. I'm going to pronounce visited or visited. Both are okay. I can say visited or visited. Another example, need, termina en este sonido, need, I'm going to pronounce this como needed, 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 visited, needed and visited. ¿Por qué? Because the last sound, it is t or d, esa es la regla. That's it. D or T. This is la más fácil. Now we have the other two. Bueno, ya sabiendo las reglas, todas son fáciles. Luego vienen. All the verbs which last sound is voiced I'm going to produce the sound in the end. The, 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 the sound. For example, this is the verb. Oh. El último sonido es este. And then I'm going to say, call, as he is voice. Call, the. Oh. Cold. 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 No voy a decir cold. Nunca. Cold. Nunca voy a decir cold. I'm going to say cold. Y la última regla. All the verbs which last sound is voiceless, I'm going to produce t sound. For example, <clears throat> el último sonido es este. Work, 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 voiceless. Work. Entonces, la E de la voy a pronunciar como Worked. 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 Otro ejemplo. Último sonido. ¿Cuál es el último sonido? This one. Pasado aquí. Finish. Finish. Voiceless. Entonces, el pasado lo voy a pronunciar como finished. Finished. 
finished. Ok. Ahora, si quieren practicar más. You have a video. You have a video in your book. I'm going to show you where. Okay. Um, okay, this is this is just the general information. These are the rules. I'm going to stop here, but in the book you have this. Let me see. This is in your book you have. In your page number 23, it says, video about the pronunciation of past forms ED, the T of regular verbs. You click on this mm -hmm. and then you can listen to this and you will see that it is, it is a good video. You need to listen to this for practicing your pronunciation. Ok, thank so, you. La parte más fácil es la escritura, chicos. That is the easiest part. Because now, if I am asking you, if I'm asking you to To pronounce this, danced, dropped, finished, helped, frightened, carried, climbed, cried, counted, cooked, combed. Closed, answered, arrested, brushed. Pero aplicando regla. Sabiendo por qué lo estoy pronunciando así, puedo pronunciar cualquier otro verbo. Si me puedo las reglas, solo aplico. Y digo, jumped, learned, learned. Listened, lived, looked, opened, painted, planted, played, prayed, pulled, pushed, remembered, returned, saved. Aplicando regla. No solo porque creo que así se dice. Mm. Right? Right? Okay. 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 So, guys... We have practiced this, and then you have just homework assignment. Let me see. This is the homework assignment in your book. We have these exercises. This, um, let me see, que pagina es, I don't remember. I think it is, this is the book. We have the exercises here that you need to complete. These exercises are on page number 24. Please try to complete them and we are going to check the answers next coming Monday. Do you agree? Page yes. 24. Please try to complete this. This is just for spelling and, and questions and answers. This is not related to pronunciation, just for spelling. Okay, guys. So we are going to finish with this, but let me uh, just look for the attendance. Okay, guys, time for you to turn your camera on.
Alfredo Rigoberto Alcántara. Alma Brendalí Nieto Elías. Elsa Benedicta Magaña Umaña. Eric Isaac Chávez Hernández. Gilberto Lazo Funes. Presente, Chair. Jennifer Elizabeth Évora Santos. Jessica Araceli Díaz Rubayos. Teacher. Yes. Me sacó de la reunión el Zoom. Ah, ok. Pero Mira aquí estoy. Okay. <ríe> ok. Jessica Carolina Rodríguez Aldana. José Adilson Vázquez García. Present teacher. José Remberto Calderón Pacheco. Yes. José Roberto Revelo Calderón. Karina Loreni Navarro. Present. Genia Lisset Barrera Hernández. Present teacher. Genia Stephanie Fuentes Reyes. Present teacher. Genia Ale Kerin Alexis Escobar Cruz. Present teacher. Lucía Verónica Nerio Márquez. María René Jovel Álvarez. Mateo de Jesús Torres Romero. Present. Yeah. Maximiliano Adonai Flores Escobar. Present teacher. Moisés Elías Torres Bernal. Present teacher. Osvaldo Vladimir Garay Pineda. Present. René Alexi Caballero Amaya. Rosa Esther Rivera Hernández. Present teacher. Valeria Michelle Monge Valencia. Present. Wilfredo Renderos León. Y Wilmer Alexander Mendoza. Okay. Okay, guys. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for being here. Enjoy your weekend. Right? So see you on Monday. Take care of yourself. See you. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. So do you.